A, dzień dobry, drodzy Państwo, dzień dobry, witam Was serdecznie, wcześnie rano, w, no, gdzieś na granicy polsko-czeskiej, za granicą polsko-czeską. Kontynuujemy nasz rowerowy, wyjazdowy, realizacyjny maraton, ponieważ wczoraj o 23 wróciłem do Krakowa z Taragony i dzisiaj już przed 6 rano wyruszyłem do czeskiej Pragi. Po to, żeby nagrać odcinek, nad którym ewidentnie wisiała jakaś klątwa, ponieważ jest to trzeci raz, kiedy jedziemy do Pragi, w sensie trzeci raz, kiedy mam jechać do Pragi, kiedy, trzeci raz, kiedy jestem już umówiony w festce, żeby nagrać materiał o powstaniu marki Festka, żeby pokazać Wam, jak się produkuje ramy Festka i dwa razy coś było nie tak i tym razem, szczerze powiedziawszy, też było blisko tego, żeby coś było nie tak, bo ja stwierdziłem, że po prostu się zajadę, jak będę musiał tam dzisiaj jeszcze jechać i w ogóle muszę dzisiaj też wrócić, więc dzisiaj ponad 1000 km do zrobienia samochodem po to, żeby nagrać ten materiał na Bike Show, ale stwierdziłem nie. Do trzech razy sztuka, nie można tego wiecznie przenosić, odwoływać. Jest okazja, żeby porozmawiać z twórcą marki Festka, żeby Wam pokazać, jak te rowery w Festce powstają, ramy powstają, więc co by nie było, jedziemy. Także kocham kierunek Praga, kierunek smażony syr, kierunek czeskie piwo, dzisiaj bezalkoholowe, co prawda nie ma co, dla Bike Show trzeba nagrywać, jedziemy do Pragi. to proszę Państwa, jesteśmy, jesteśmy w Pradze, jesteśmy na ulicy Jana Masaryka, gdzie znajduje się miejsce, w którym festka powstaje, w którym powstają ramy festki. Nie jest to jedyne miejsce związane z festką, bo jest tych punktów takich parę, w których obecnie festka przy wzroście produkcji swoich ram też funkcjonuje. Miejsca, w których powstają płaty karbonu, miejsca, w których się też oczywiście lakieruje ramy, więc jest tego trochę więcej. Natomiast to miejsce jest tym bardzo ważne, bo właśnie w tym miejscu się buduje ramy. Tutaj jest też kilka ciekawych eksponatów związanych z projektami chociażby takimi jak ten, czyli projektami takimi zupełnie unikalnymi, związanymi z art Artystami, ale to jest miejsce, które jest kluczowe do powstawania rano. I dzisiaj mamy okazję porozmawiać tutaj z jednym z założycieli z festki. Wybaczcie mi wszelkie niedogodności, jesteśmy tutaj po prostu w ciągu dnia pracy i jest tutaj też bardzo rodzinna atmosfera w związku z faktem, że sobie tutaj biegają chociażby dzieciaki, więc no, mamy możliwości jakie mamy, niemniej jednak wydaje mi się, że uda się trochę ciekawych rzeczy o ramach tutaj posłuchać. Nie będziemy przeszkadzali w pracy, więc materiał jest bardzo mocno spontaniczny, ale zobaczcie jak to wygląda i co tu się robi. Hello, uh, my name is Michael Mureczek. Uh, I am one of the two founders of the Feska. The other one is Andrzej Nowotny. So uh, we are we found Feska together in 2010, and since that we are focusing on to doing the full custom-made uh, carbon frames. Uh, and uh, yeah, my background is I was a pro, uh, so I was racing uh, on the on the road and on, on the track. So this is my basically background, and I care about the product development. So welcome to the Fesca. Uh, this is our Prague headquarters. Uh, we have uh, another three facilities what we use. We have two paint shops, and uh, we have a place where we produce the tubes. And uh, but here everything starts and everything finished and. Uh, So this is basically where the Fesca frames are born. What's this crazy thing? Well, this crazy thing. So, um, you know, in the, these days, uh, uh, everyone is working with uh, like um, softwares with the final element. We can show you uh, where is the stressed uh, point and etc. But with a carbon, it's uh, sometimes very difficult to do it and uh, to adjust uh, those softwares. Uh, you need to have uh, the hard data. So, so we build that frame which is covered with the 68 stern gauges uh, on it. We have also the optical cable uh, leading in the structure of the material. So, and all this uh, uh, help us basically to create a mathematical model of our frame. So, which help us uh, uh, in the amazing way when uh, I design something. So, uh, now it's uh, uh, super easy to to tell our engineer, hey, yeah. uh, uh, I, my vision is that, and then they will give me the feedback. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, uh, we need to uh, use that uh, that fiber, and then uh, we will be, I know, 10% stiffer and uh, 5% more expensive, whatever. So, so it's a very yeah, nice yeah. discussion. It really helps us. So it's also something uh, space with it, yeah? <laughs> it is. Uh, it is space. So everyone claims that he has a Formula One technology or aircraft technology or space technology. 
So in that case, there, there is uh, the kind of the space technology because the FESCA uh, went through uh, the special program uh, in 2017 uh, with the uh, European Space Agency research so basically since that we are the part of the circle of the companies cooperate with a large network of the other companies connected with the space industry uh, and uh, and this is basically the way how we do the research so we can't afford it to have the super uh, big R&D uh, team so mm -hmm. we do the project together with the big institutions as a university as a European Space Agency as a big company okay. so, and together we try to develop something what well, then we can use in our frames and maybe they can use it for some other applications. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask if you are also producing like some carbon parts for the other industries or no, no. Uh, we are we are just doing uh, no. We don't produce anything else than just the frames because all the our tooling are developed only for for that purpose. So mm -hmm. for us, it's very hard time to do uh, something different than it's a bike frame. On other hand, uh, we do a lot of research uh, uh, with the other companies, which very often we don't use, and it's a base for uh, some other parts. Like uh, I don't know, for example, we was working on the project to making the. Uh, thread it uh, inside the tube and mm -hmm. uh, we want to have it for the bottom bracket mm -hmm. but uh, after the testing and the testing we saw it that the press fit it's still better than the threaded it uh, doesn't matter if it's made from the carbon from the aluminium so for the carbon frame the, the, the press fit is better uh, so we didn't use that but the company who helped us with that uh, it's uh, using it so this is uh, uh, the, the thread it for uh, T47 uh, so we know how to do it. I think it's a very nice, uh, uh, very nice thing. But uh, we don't use it. The reason is that this is a 68 millimeter shell, and uh, we use uh, 86.5. Uh, so um, we have uh, more space for the lamination, and basically uh, this this place here we can we can use for the construction of the frame, and it significantly increase uh, uh, the stiffness and overall quality of uh, of the frame. The other thing is also that, uh, uh, as you can see, it all the R frame has a tube uh, in this bottom bracket area, and this tube was designed it especially this one for the threaded. Mm -hmm. The other ones are designed it for depressing the bearing inside. So it's a precise diameter, and basically nothing is happening with that. This is a raw carbon. It's a 12k, which means that there is a, a 12k. A, 12,000 uh, single wires, as I mentioned before, or there is, uh, they are a little bit thinner than the human hair, so 12,000. Uh, basically, sometimes so you have it written on the one on the frame that it's a 1K, 4K. It just tells you how many uh, wires <laughs> are there, so it doesn't. So it's more better, or it depends. Um, you know? No, so uh, <laughs> um, if we do a tube uh, we need to the robots need uh, some certain time to laminate or to make the tube if we use the 12k it takes uh, let's say one hour if you have the 1k it will take 12 times more okay so it will take 12 hours so this is only one different okay yes for some application as is our frame uh, spectra or uh, the rover on the chain stays we use 1k uh, but because it's uh, like there is a reason for that but it doesn't influence so much the okay. quality okay so it's hard to say if it's better. Or yeah. it's a, this is a typical about the carbon. So uh, you need to have the right um, carbon for the right application. So sometimes I can see so many products when it's just a waste of the money. So they use the carbon with some special properties, which in the end... Uh, it's the like over-engineering. Over-engineering, yeah. yes, 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 yeah. this is it. Uh, so you start with the fiber, which is from one of the companies that produces it because... Yeah, uh, there's, yeah. Yeah, there's a few, just a few. Uh, the mainly we source uh, uh, the, the carbon or the graphite, because some frames we do from the graphite, from uh, the Nippon, uh, the, the Japanese company, or sometimes we have it from the Torrey, uh, yeah. which is quite a well-known uh, company. So, and basically this is exactly the raw thing. So if you, uh, the people are very often familiar with the, the, with the fabric. Mm -hmm. So this is 1K. So we can see that this is uh, uh, 1,000 uh, uh, fibers. Uh, mm -hmm. And this fabric was made from uh, the wires like that. Mm -hmm. So 
<coughs> different is in the quality if you want to uh, because if you have the very high quality of the fibers uh, then they become to be fragile this is uh, not that case so I can easily bend it if I will bend like that uh, uh, ultra high modulus carbon you can you can we use we use that for our frame so it will be immediately broken mm -hmm. so uh, they are very um, very stiff but they are very, very fragile uh, yeah. so there is no way how to create the carbon uh, fabric uh, uh, from it so okay. in the prepared world you are quite limited uh, uh, with the maximum quality what you can get in our case uh, we have uh, no limit almost uh, we have the frame here made from uh, X and 90 so which is it's just uh, the the frame from the carbon which has a modulus 920 just uh, uh, keep this number in your mind and uh, the diamond is the stiffness thing so in the earth has this modulus around uh, 1000 1020 okay. so it's almost uh, a diamond back again so or this is something where the nature ends so. are you producing the carbon plates uh, especially for for some frames or you like have something like waiting uh, mm, some plates of we carbon? produce we produce the tubes so we can stock the tubes uh, mm -hmm. and then we meter them and cut them and we uh, okay. glue the frame together so okay. if, actually i can show it to you so this is about the quality control so you have, you have like some some stock of the uh, yeah, we have just a few tubes because the robots are quite efficient so we receive tubes uh, uh, two times per week so according what are our needs for basically the next week uh, each tube has inside the barcode so yeah. there is a written all the information about the manufacture process so who was the operator what was the temperature in the company what was the source of the resin or carbon and in the end we combine all this information the QR code uh, in the bottom bracket area of the frame so in theory we receive the bad resin for example we can call our uh, the, 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 the frames back uh, you exactly now where where the carbon goes yeah yes, to, to, yes, to, what, yes. to which frame to yes. which part of the frame yes, or, yes, yeah? yes. Tutaj zaraz będziemy obrabiali kawałek karbonu i sprawdzali jak bardzo jest wytrzymały, ale to jest ciekawy wątek, ponieważ ten fragment, ta rurka jest tak jakby odpadkiem po prostu z, z jakiejś małej ramy, częścią, która pozostała. I co się dzieje, jeżeli chodzi o recykling takich rzeczy? E, tutaj jest ciekawe, bo w przypadku niektórych rodzajów elementów, które tworzy, tworzy festka, możliwe jest w zasadzie ich recyklingowanie i używanie ponownie, natomiast w przypadku takich elementów, które nie nadają się do recyklingu, bo są stworzone z prepregów tak zwanych. W ich przypadku część trafia na przykład do szkół jako pomoc naukowa, albo po prostu jako gadżet, albo jest wykorzystywana w przypadku zderzaków samochodowych jako element wykończenia w środku, więc opcji jest parę. O! Właśnie chyba nam się udało uzyskać pęknięcie. Uh, it was just the noise of the resin, so mm -hmm. it's, uh, you will see it after when I remove it. Unfortunately, I have just a short tube. If, I, if the tube will be a little bit longer, I can press it that the both side will touch. So mm -hmm. this is a down tube from our frame one. So uh, uh, in, in the reality, this will never, you will never do that with your frame apart, maybe yeah. in on, on the on the car and uh, like even with the, the roof rack, it yeah, would be roof impossible rack, yes, to yes, do with, yes. with the power it's, like this. Uh, 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 and uh, uh, but what I want to show you is how the tube is uh, capable to absorb uh, uh, the stress. So all the tube is always done with one single wire, which is never cut it inside. So uh, there is uh, like meters and meters when the stress can disappear and. Uh, Okay, and this is a way how we can do uh, the very stiff and still comfortable frames. Yeah. Actually, this is a good question. Uh, so, uh, what do you think? What's the like the? How long can the frame can stand the the same performance as it is at the beginning? <laughs> if it's well done, like especially tubes, uh, it you can. Uh, there is no uh, no way that the human body will change uh, uh, the, the the complete behavior and the performance of the bike. So it should stay forever, which is mm -hmm. different compared to the aluminium, for example, the aluminium oxidate on on the air. So it's losing uh, the, the stiffness and original performance, not within the carbon. So okay. this is the reason why the carbon is so very uh, of 
often use in the aircraft industry. Okay. So this is like the really interesting part, the, the, the place <laughs> where like the, the, the frame is, is born here yeah, from, from the yeah, pieces. Yeah, from the tube, so, so finally here you can see the, the first uh, uh, shape of the frame and uh, this is where actually the first photo of what we will we'll send you uh, from the production. Um, uh, here we can adjust all the possible angles, lengths of the tube uh, according to the drawings and to the rider's need. Then we are gluing it with a, it's a fresh <laughs> with, a, with a resin. So after a few uh, a few time, we can remove it uh, from the jig and it goes uh, for the first quality control. So we measure if it's frame uh, uh, straight. Uh, if pass through the first quality control, then we are uh, making the joints and we continue uh, with the finishing of the frame. One question, do you remember what was the lightest bike that uh, you assembled here? Hmm, the, the bikes what I uh, remember and what we built because uh, um, the, the majority of the frames, we sell the frames to the dealers and they resell the bike, so uh, the uh, but the disc version was a uh, 5.4, I think, and uh, the caliper one was uh, yeah 5.5 or something like that. Okay. But the interesting one was this 5.4 uh, disc version. If somebody asks you what makes Fast Castle unique, what would be your answer? Hmm. Maybe. <coughs> Maybe this. Uh, <laughs> there is a many things. So the first. <laughs> I can uh, uh, no, first is that. Uh, uh, we are here to build uh, for you the bike what you need. So the people very often are uh, discussing the aerodynamics and the core fortness and etc. So the best possible aerodynamics you can have it if you sit properly on your bike. So your body position it's uh, the something what influence the overall aerodynamic, the comfort. Again, it's how you sit, and in the matter uh, to have the right position, uh, very often the people need the custom bike, and this is what uh, we are doing here. So if you give us the fit, uh, we will uh, design uh, the bike for you, and you have the right uh, uh, proportion between the saddle high and the length of the stems, and etc. And this is our sm small details. It's like to buying the jacket, uh, like or make it the tailor made one so it's always fits you uh, better and that small difference can be very significant the other thing is uh, this, uh, the, the 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 artwork what we can do on it so it could be like the black, black frame or uh, crazy paint and yeah that's as, that's, as that's another one. story in crazy paint so we always say that everyone is different on the body and the soul so we are here to design uh, uh, the the, the size wise the bike for you and also uh, something what fits with your personality with your soul so it's a design and another thing is also the selection of the components where we really take care about any possible details so our builds are without the compromises mm -hmm. so yeah you are producing the the frames that are like absolutely custom made so it's like a custom geometry it's like unique geometry but you also produce i think uh, the frames that are like with some schemes yeah it's that they are like prepared by you, measured by you, and what's more or less the proportion between the absolutely custom and the... Uh... Yeah, I think that like a 70% seven, of our bikes are custom made, and it uh, it's really depends on the market. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, for example, I don't know, the countries like the UK or Malaysia uh, will always order the full custom bike, like uh, uh, the geometry and the, and the color. Mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, in China, I never remember if we ever sold the custom bike, there is just the not culture. So we yeah. sell a lot of bikes in the, into China, but uh, uh, they want to buy what they see. So if they're falling in love with a bike, they want to have the immediately. The so exact I, bike, yeah? Yeah, the yeah. exact bike, and they are not willing to wait, and they don't care so much about the, the right size. So every country in the world is a different. So overall, uh, this proportion is roughly 70% for the custom and the 30% for like a stock uh, or the predefined geometries. Uh, but uh, from the market uh, perspective, it could be easily 100% of the custom and 100% of uh, the stock.
when we go to the design point uh, mm -hmm. it's, that's uh, i know that you have like a lot of, a lot to say about it but like my question is that uh, you it's uh, you have some projects you have some artists but uh, do it happens really often that people comes with their crazy ideas or they artists uh they try so uh, but uh, uh, the, the especially the thing with the artist so in theory it's a possible but it's a super complicated with the communication and the artist must try and uh, uh, honestly the majority of the artists always give up that work so they will never finish it so so it's uh, it could be a very huge disappointment for, for, for the client who choose someone and is not capable to uh, to do it uh, in the end do you have solutions yeah uh, we have the solutions but the, the thing is if we <laughs> yeah, the solution is to choose uh, the, uh, some of our artists which uh, uh, went through the difficult process uh, to uh, get the skills how to uh, design the bike. But it's, uh, but it's a very niche, uh, niche market. The majority of the people should, uh, uh, I think, choose from something what we normally do and maybe to adjust that design. Because if uh, you or to follow some other like um, signature design so because uh, you can be sure that we uh, invest a lot of effort and a lot of time uh, to design those bikes to make the sense uh, and uh, and yes we can design the unique piece uh, for you but uh, um, it's uh, it's a it's a complicated for us but for the client as well so all the time we recommend it uh, to go for something what they saw it somewhere they like it maybe we can change the colors or we can make it slightly different it's always uh, almost always better results than to open uh, the project and try to um, yeah try to build the unique piece uh, so do you also feel like the gravel revolution on the market like it's, uh, because like you started with the gravel frames some time ago and do you, what's what's the proportion nowadays between like a classic road frame mm -hmm. more or less and the, the gravel frames that you are selling uh, it's something between 20 to 30 percent for the gravels and the rest are the road bikes in our case uh, uh, and definitely yes it is a revolution and uh, I'm like super happy for that because I, I like it uh, now I think that uh, uh, the uh, the components availability uh, are quite good or we still are waiting uh, and as I say we uh, I mean the riders we still waiting for for race version of the group set uh, uh, like the race gravel or the, yeah. the, the red gravel which I think it's uh, they're working on it uh, uh, definitely uh, because the next things will be uh, the gravel racing and I think that they will that yeah. will influence the one category of the bike uh, 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 our rover for example belong yeah. into that category and the other direction will be the bike packing so yeah. this is where our frame scout yeah you can really see that uh, polarization in the market, yeah. That, that some gravels go in a road, uh, uh, like racing way. Some others go to the bike parking, more mountain bike like style. So it's mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So we our our plan or our, what I think that will be dominant will be like this kind of the racy one. But we can say then that it's uh, something what. Uh, uh, you are using as a road bike, but you go off-road. So yes. light, super performance oriented, uh, nice functionality of the components, uh, and uh, yeah, maybe with the option to go for the bike packing, but uh, uh, nothing super heavy duty. Yeah. And there will be those heavy duties uh, uh, with the handlebars, with the flare, uh, wide one to yeah. have the space for the sleeping bag, and the, 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 the so many mounts on it. Uh, so so this is uh, like heavy duty machine for the travelers. A tutaj odbywa się ciekawy proces. Jeżeli zakupiliście sobie swoją ramę festki, to tak będzie wyglądało jedno z pierwszych zdjęć gotowej już ramy, które dostaniecie na takim stole właśnie jest fotografowana już gotowa rama dla klienta, która no już wkrótce wyruszy. Albo wyruszy do klienta jako rama, albo będzie tutaj budowana jako konkretny rower. Więc jest stół, jest gotowa kolejna festka, która gdzieś uszczęśliwi klienta i pojedzie w świat. O tak, przypadkiem trafił tutaj pan Szymon z wielodromu. Zupełnie przypadkiem. Przypad przypadkowo e, Tak, więc wykorzystałem tutaj Szymona do tego, żeby zaprezentować pewną część też tej historii, więc jeżeli e, na przykład zamawiacie sobie festkę, to częścią takiego e, customer experience jest, jest też możliwość po prostu wybrania się tutaj. E, Można odebrać osobiście, zobaczyć wszystko jak wstaje na żywo. Fabryka tur. I no myślę, że jest to ciekawe doświadczenie i warte przeżycia. I też z tego co wiem, to w ogóle w trakcie procesu produkcji dostajecie zdjęcia. Z 
pamiętajcie zdjęcia z takiego m Po każdym etapie produkcji wysyłana jest najpierw, jak rama jest złożona, mhm. później po laminacji i na końcu jak jest gotowa do odbioru. Płacisz, wymagasz. Dokładnie tak. Dokładnie tak to jest. No i tak to wygląda, moi drodzy, za takimi skromnymi metalowymi drzwiami, chociaż z napisem, który pewnie większość osób siedzących w rowerowym świecie, napisem, który większość osób kojarzy, produkuje się ramy festki. Myślę, że jest to ciekawe miejsce, ciekawa wizyta. Tak jak mówiłem, wizyta, nad którą wisiała pewnego rodzaju klątwa, bo ciężko było się zebrać i to miejsce nagrać. Zwłaszcza, że w tego typu miejscach praca naprawdę trwa cały czas. Tych ram produkuje się w ciągu roku stosunkowo niedużo, tak jak słyszeliście, jest ich kilkaset, ale naprawdę praca trwa cały czas, więc ciężko jest po prostu przerywać te prace, więc cieszę się, że udało się przy okazji tak naprawdę odbierania ram dla klientów welodromu wpaść tutaj, umówić się i porozmawiać. Myślę, że trochę ciekawych informacji o rowerach, o ramach, które produkuje Festka się dowiedzieliście. Ja jestem bardzo zadowolony, że udało się ten materiał zrealizować, bo jest to kolejna część rowerowej przygody, takiej okołoprodukcyjnej, którą Wam na Bike Show pokazuję. Mam nadzieję, że będzie ich coraz więcej. Z góry Was przepraszam za wszelkie niedogodności dźwiękowe, ale tak jak Wam mówiłem, jesteśmy tutaj normalnie w ciągu dnia, w godzinach pracy i naprawdę te duże podziękowania dla ekipy Festki za umożliwienie nagrania tego materiału i też poświęcenie swojego czasu i podzielenie się wiedzą. Dzięki Wam za uwagę, do usłyszenia, do zobaczenia. Hej!